got myself back into a place of introvert burnout. I do this all the time, but I'm getting better at recognizing the signs before I get to that place and then putting proactive action in to actually prevent myself from completely falling apart. A couple of videos ago, I talked about experiencing an introvert burnout and all of the signs that I was feeling being in that introvert or INFJ burnout. So that video was filmed. We actually went into a lockdown. We were in lockdown for a week and it gave me a whole week to recover and to get back into um, being balanced and finding my center again. But of course, I have been go, 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 and I almost experienced burnout. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm an online counselor for introverts, for INFJs, for empaths. I also leave paper cranes in the community with messages of hope and healing. And at the end of this video, as always, we will leave a paper crane. I'm definitely not an expert when it comes to preventing introvert burnout. I experience it all the time, but I'm trying to be more proactive in preventing it and recognizing the signs feeling it in my body and my mind and picking up on it before it's too late so that I don't fall into a place that I've been in in the past. And I don't think I've shared this before, but many years ago, before I learned that I was an introvert, I lived a very busy, busy, busy life with work and I did a lot of volunteering and a lot of socializing. I was in that go mode for about five years and then I did have a complete burnout. I actually ended up in hermit mode for about a year and it took a long time for me to be able to get myself out of that and find myself again. And I definitely don't want to do that and I want to look after myself so that I can look after you and be the best counsellor that I can be for you. I'm very passionate about being the voice for the voiceless, sticking up for the underdog, encouraging other introverts to look after their own needs and to nurture themselves. So that's why I'm vulnerable with you, so that you don't do what I do, <laughs> basically. <laughs> A couple of days ago, I started realising that the familiar signs of burnout were coming up for me. And this time I thought, okay, I am going to do something about this before I completely fall apart and can't cope at all. So I took some proactive action. I forced myself, and yes, I have to force myself to do this, to have two days of self-care. So my life is pretty jam-packed and busy. I started to feel the familiar signs of being fatigued and tired and just getting irritable. So I actually find that when I'm approaching burnout, I have more of a short fuse, my thoughts are more negative and I can have more of a self-defeating attitude and I can just be a bit more critical of myself. I started having this thought in my mind which was you need to stop being in the doing and begin being in the being. And I talk about this all the time in my Instagram about how important it is to live a mindful life and to actually be in the present moment and fully experience what's happening for you, F fully experience everything that's surrounding you, experience what's happening in your body, like when you're eating, t actually taste the flavors, when you're working out, being present in that workout and being present in what you're feeling in your muscles and not letting your mind go off everywhere. And I actually find that the busier I become, the more I'm in my head, I get into that doing space. I always have a huge to-do list. I'm sure you do as well. I just started thinking, my work days are Thursday, Friday. I'm trying to jam pack so much into those two days. There are always going to be things that I can do. I will always have something that I need to get done, whether it's marketing, appointments with my clients, which I absolutely love and adore. <laughs> That's my favorite part of what I do. Filming these YouTube videos, editing videos, 
making images, writing blog posts, answering phone calls, answering emails, doing my bookkeeping, just a whole bunch of other projects that I always have on the go. And so last YouTube video, I just released a workbook on building assertiveness skills and that's available. You can get that with the link in my description. And I did a whole video on building assertiveness skills and I put a lot of time and effort and energy into that because I wanted to give you the best of best. I did a lot of research and reading and writing and just getting myself in the headspace just so that I could give you the best of what I've got. But that took so much time and so much effort and I had a lot of late nights in doing that. And then it was after that that I felt really tired. So I started getting signs from the universe or from God or whatever you believe in. I believe in God or the universe, but that's irrelevant about stopping and taking self-care and taking action on self-care and to lean back into the being rather than being in the doing. And then I was listening to a podcast by Dr. Brooklyn Storm. She has a podcast on starting a private practice with soul. She's absolutely incredible. And in this podcast, she talks a lot about the masculine energy and the feminine energy. And this particular one I felt like was so for me it was like she was speaking directly to me and it was talking about how with the masculine energy and don't quote me on this I could have it wrong so you might want to listen to the podcast yourself I'm still learning about the masculine and feminine energy but with the masculine energy it is very much about the doing the pushing the hustle the working and then the feminine energy is very much about like ah oh, like you know chill going with the flow and the ease just being more in that that beautiful flow. For me, I actually find that I'm more so in my masculine energy. I have very big goals for my life. I'm very driven. If I had the chance to be able to work every moment of my day, I absolutely would. But I had to make a choice that I put my children first and so when I'm with my children I'm trying to give them everything that I've got but I know that if I was given the opportunity I would be go 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 doing 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 let's work let's hustle let's get things done and I've always struggled being in my feminine energy so although I talk a lot about being and resting and being mindful and in the moment it does not come easy for me and it's never come easy for me and it takes a lot of mindfulness to get out of my head and back into my heart space I have always rejected that feminine energy because of my church days back when I was younger I was taught that to be feminine meant wearing high heels and dressing up and being the best cleaner and cooking meals and I was always very rebellious about that but I've been learning that that's not true feminine energy well it is an aspect of I guess feminine energy but that's not what feminine energy needs to look like for me yesterday and today which are my normal working days I gave myself a self-imposed self-care day to be honest if you're a counselor hands up if you are a counselor let me know in the comments self-care days are like so freaking important it's one of the <laughs> like it's actually part of the job you know because when you're holding space for other people and you're listening to their burdens and you're um, being fully present for them, you need to take care of yourself. Otherwise, you can end up with vicarious trauma and burnout, which is what I've definitely had in the past and I've had throughout my career when I've worked in high crisis situations. And so I used some of my earnings from my business to have some self-care days and I just wanted to share what I did for self-care. This will look different for everybody because you, you need to find what brings you joy and what allows you to feel nurtured and nourished. For me, what I did was I got my nails done and then today I went to my normal Mai Tai boxing workout 
and then I booked myself in for a session at an infrared sauna which was just so amazing. I was sitting in this sauna for 45 minutes, I had meditation music on and I really had to stop myself from being in work mode and planning and thinking of everything that I needed to do. I, I just remained in the moment and allowed that space to just nurture my body and, and nurture my soul. And then I went to a beach and went for a bit of a walk and a dip in the ocean and that was just beautiful and looked at nature. I love nature. Then I came home and I made myself a really nourishing lunch, talked to my cats, <laughs> I read a book and now I'm here and my work day is almost over. I'm about to go pick up my children but I wanted to pop in and just share that. Hey. So it's almost been almost a week since I last filmed and I'm so glad that I listened to my intuition about having those self-care days because right after I had those days, I actually ended up with a migraine which knocked me out for about three days and, and then all this stuff happened on my Instagram. It's reaffirmed for me why I'm now on YouTube, my heart is just absolutely shattered by what's happened and what's happening in the world, what's happening in my country, in Australia, and just seeing the division that is being created by people because of belief systems and just everything that's going on. So I folded this paper crane. <laughs> And I'm gonna go and leave it somewhere. I know it's just a paper crane, I know it's so little, but the symbol of the paper crane is hope and healing and peace. And I guess I just wanna spread that in my community because I am seeing um, friendships are being lost and people are fighting with each other and it's just, it's just a real heaviness. So if I can just do at least one little thing to bring joy to somebody, then that would be great and, um, and send out some love. So for me, it's like leaving a little symbol out in the world, now putting more love in, more hope, more healing and bringing in unity. Okay, so I'm gonna go do that now. Bye.